Hello, welcome to my tech fan. I'm Igor and I have a laser engraver review for this video. And uh, this is Scalpan S30 Pro. And this box is sent to me by the Scalpan Institute for a review. Now, a few specifications about the engraver. This is classic desktop engraver with an engraving area of 410 by 400 millimeters. And it is equipped with a 10 watt laser module. More information later, let's see what's in the box. This is a time lapse video of approximately 2 minutes. I just wanted to show you that everything is nicely packed. Actually, I'm reducing the laser engraver videos on this channel, but now I remember why I accepted this one. One of the reasons is the linear rail on X axis. And this is extremely important uh, to reduce those vibrations during the fast engraving. I separately tested this and I suggested so many times to use the linear rail instead of those V slot wheels. This is much more rigid structure. The second is that this really uh, arises with the air compressor. I also suggested with this even 10 watt or 20 watt laser modules, it is too strong. And if you want to do some cutting on a lower speed, it may catch easily flame. So definitely it is uh, recommended to do the cutting on those lower speeds with the air. And basically it arises with this air compressor, which also 12 volts, uh, 24 watts and the air capacity is 30 liters per minute. The pressure is 0.03 megapascals. Other parts in the kit, we have some sample materials, safety glasses, bolts and tools for assembling, limit switches, pipe for air assist, and this is the power supply, which is 12 volts, 7 amperes. These are legs, hmm, metallic tweezers. And this is the 10 watt diode laser module with installed air assist nozzle and USB cable. And uh, one thing I noticed and I don't like it that they use a 20 by 20 L extrusion on the frame. Uh, I already saw that uh, usually the manufacturers move to the 40 by 20. This will make more rigid this frame, but also the squaring will be better when the contact area is bigger. And just now I noticed that one important thing is missing and that's the printed user manual. So I have to find some digital version. I will just follow up the animation on Scalfine official YouTube channel. It is for S9 but the structure is similar. So the first step is assembling the frame and I will use the bolts from this bag which is step 1. I'm starting with assembling the front frame to the left and the right alloy extrusions. And then after this I'm sliding the X alloy extrusion from the back side and only then I'm mounting the back alloy extrusion. And then setting the V slot wheels tension. The frame is assembled and I place the tension on the V slot wheels with the setting nut and the open end wrench. With this laser engraver, which you works on 12 volts and use only one stepper on Y axis, be very careful with this uh, tension on V slot wheels. If it is too tight, in that case, maybe the stepper motor cannot move this uh, X gentry. In that case, just reduce the tension but with those uh, setting nuts. Now installing the timing belts and lock the end with these uh, bolts and T-nuts, that's step 3 and 4. I'm starting with the right timing belt and uh, also I'm placing a tension on it before tightening with bolts. And with left timing belt it is important to have the perpendicular position of the X-gentry. And now installing the laser module with these bolts from step 5 from the back side. Later these two bolts will be used for adjusting the focus. But in that video I have no information so where to mount these limit switches and I have only one bolt uh, in pack for each. Well, this is one logical position and also I have here an empty hole and in that case the limit switch will be pressed before the module hits the frame. It's time to install these anti-slip rubbers on the legs. Once I forgot to install them on similar engraver and basically the machine started to walk on the desk from the vibration. Oh yes, it's stable now, it doesn't slip on the desk. And now the wiring, uh, they are labeled so it is not the problem to connect the wires, but uh, the problem I can see is these limit switches. So basically we have these cable extenders. Uh, I would suggest to the skull fan to move this main board and the uh, wire stepper motor on this side. In this case, immediately they can reach uh, this uh, limit switch and also much shorter cable is needed for the X limit switch. 
but I don't have a user manual, so I just follow my instinct. But I think the SCAR font should provide some kind of better solution for the cable management. I finished the wiring, I had to try a few combinations. So this is what I figured out. This is the wire limit switch and the cable is inside this groove. I wanted to secure it first with the stick tape, but then I added some hot glue to secure better the position. And then on uh, this X gentry, this is the X limit switch and we have these holders for the air assist cable, for laser cable and also I attach here this X limit switch cable. This is fixed, this is not moving, the X cable. But pay attention that uh, this uh, laser module is moving. I think this pipe is not the best quality because it breaks too easily. It is okay if it is here, but when I go here, I hope you can see it, it breaks and it will stop or reduce the airflow. Of course, before I correct the power, I want to protect my desk. And now I notice that here between these uh, woods, we have the aluminum sheet. Connecting the power and USB cable. And unfortunately it looks like the fan is always on and it's quite loud. It would be much better if it would be turned off when the module is not operating. For setting a focus we have to use this cylinder. It is 15 mm long just in case if you lost it. And then I have to lose these two knobs. Support the bottom part of the module. Tie these knobs. And now the focus is set to the top of this surface. Not really the most comfortable solution and also it would be good to have some kind of holder for the cylinder, maybe some CD printed part here on the alloy extrusion because I'm sure that I will constantly searching for this cylinder. For engraving I will use laser GLBL which is free software but it is available only for Windows. But it is also compatible with uh, Lightburn which is available on Mac and Linux operating systems but it's not completely free. If necessary, the CH340 driver has to be installed. In my case, it's already installed. I have to choose the command bound port and then click on connect. It's connected and immediately want to see if I can move the axis. Everything is connected correctly and I can start with the test engravings. This is automatic RSC, so it doesn't have a switch. And if I want to use it with laser GLBL, I am adding these uh, custom buttons with M8 command, I can turn it on. And then adding another one with M9, I can turn off with the button this uh, air assist pump. And now with these new buttons, I can turn on the air assist. And it's very quiet. And I can turn it off. I think the fan on our laser module is louder than the air pump compressor. I noticed that even this fan blows quite good, so uh, let me show you only the fan on the laser module. And now I will turn on the air pump. Oh, this was quite strong. <laughs> I raise it a little bit, just shortly. Okay, not too so smart to play with water close to the electronics, but I thought this is much weaker. So for this size, this is a quite good air compressor, but don't forget to uh, use it only for the cutting and not for the engraving. I want to show my settings for the first engraving. Uh, the vectorized mode and then 2000 millimeters per minute the speed, M4 which is for engraving, M3 for cutting, uh, S10,000 is the 100% power. Boundary check and start with the engraving. And now let's repeat this in the higher position of the module. Thanks to the linear rails, the vibration is reduced significantly even when it is in the lowest position. But if you want a better quality, even then uh, you should uh, raise a little bit the laser module in higher position and you will get much nicer engraving. Just for comparison, this is similar engraver but with V-slot wheels.
Reason for this is a very low position of the center of the mass and flexibility of the module holder, not of the linear rails. Suggestion to the scaffold. Center of the mass of the motor is approximately here. And if the linear rail would be here, in that case we don't have any kind of vibrations. And now engraving a grayscale image, which really needs a lot of experimenting, because it demands a lot from the material. And these are my settings for this grayscale image, but this is something you should experiment for your material. This is a real time speed, and now let's speed it up. This is a timeless video of approximately 9 minutes. And finish it approximately 9 minutes. And it came out uh, quite good, a little bit lighter than I thought, because uh, here I did some experimenting, but this side is darker than this one, so that's why I mentioned that you need experimenting if you want to engrave grayscale images. But anyway, my camera recognized that this is human face. Just for testing, the same speed, but now 80% power instead of 50. And this is the final result. I have more contrast here, but probably I could even raise the strength or lower the speed. It's time for cutting. This is 3mm plywood, which is probably not a problem for this laser. And I will do two cuttings, one without air assist and next to it with air assist. Something what I already know. So this is cut with air assist and this is much cleaner, especially the other side. And don't forget it is safer because it reduces the chance to catch the flame. And now 5 mm plywood, this is the thickest I have at home. Super sharp and clean cutting, 5 mm in one pass. Three millimeter MDF, very hard for cutting, and only with three laser engravers I was able to cut it in two passes. I could constantly see the beam on the other side. No. This is the other side, very close. Let's try to slow it down because with air assist I can do it. So this was the first cutting on 200 mm per minute and this is on 100 mm per minute and I have to use a little bit force to press it out but basically uh, you can see it is cut in one pass almost. So this is the first time I could cut this 3 mm MDF with only one pass but only using a little bit force. And this is the opposite side, 200 and 100 mm per minute, one pass with air assist. Now let's cut 3 mm acrylic, this is the only piece I have now, I will create here a hole. It is cut and only some melted part holds it in a place. And this is not new to me because all thermobat laser modules can cut this in one pass. With 5 watts modules I needed always 2 passes with 100 mm per minute speed. And our last test, uh, engraving stainless steel. This is the plate which I always use, and I will engrave here um, SF letters of the engraver. Well, definitely it's here. Let's clean it with isopropyl alcohol. Very sharp engraving, I can actually feel that it is melted in the steel, but very similar with other 10 watt laser modules. And if you need an even darker surface, you can use a black marker. Let's create here a small dot. And after one and a half minutes, and I just popular like for cleaning. As you can see, great results, nice black surface. Maybe I can give some idea for some small business. For example, we can buy these stainless steel stamping blanks and we can engrave them as a service with the custom text or picture. But don't forget to use stainless steel and not other materials like aluminum or brass. For that you would need a fiber laser. And now conclusions. And now final conclusions. But three things which I extremely like about this laser engraver. And that's linear rail. Air assist, which is automatic, so uh, if you use light burn, you can have the combination of the cutting and engraving, and you can enable the compressor only when you do some cutting. 
and actually this is very quiet compressor the quietest I use so far and it is quite strong even if we have these breakings in the pipe and actually it is quieter than the fan on the laser module and the third thing which I like is uh, I think this is the strongest 10 watt laser module I tested so far, so far on this channel uh, very close to some others but uh, basically yes one of the best and uh, my conclusion is uh, from that MDF cutting but of course um, that is probably uh, thanks to this uh, great air assist uh, compressor but actually it is part of the engraver this is in one kit uh, there are a few things which I didn't like I'm not too big fan of uh, this mechanism where the y-axis is on the moving part it's very positive that separate motor is moved to a side so it is not on moving part on this module holder but they could do it with the y stepper motor too it can be on the back side for example fixed and then we don't have this additional mass on the moving x gentry and i don't like that the center of the mass of this module is quite low so even if we have here this uh, linear rail this part is very rigid but the laser module holder is a little bit flexible so you saw that i had a little bit more vibration when it is in the lowest position and then for example when it is in higher position so actually if you want better quality you should move the laser module in highest possible position of course you have to put something below the material you are engraving uh, setting the focus another thing which I don't really like because I'm always searching that cylinder even now I don't know where is it at the moment and uh, these knobs on the back side are not too comfortable especially I lift it higher uh, this shaft is in a way and that's I saw much better solution for setting the, the focus anyway I highly recommend this uh, engraver because uh, this should be a standard 10 watt laser modules are very strong and if you want to do uh, cutting in one pass for example you can slow it down but definitely air assist is almost a mandatory in that case and yes this uh, engraver arrives with this air assist kit um, that would be my experience if you have some any other ah here it is <laughs> I'm always searching definitely we print some part and uh, some kind of holder for this cylinder okay so if you have some any other experience you know write me a line in the comment section thank you for watching and happy and Safe engraving.